Welcome everyone. Back with a with a chat with uh, Gary Vincent today. Gary's been learning for a year, so I wanted to share Gary's experience and what he's been through, what's happened with his guitar playing, where it was at the beginning, you know, all the good stuff, because I think it's really important for people who are learning to hear these kind of stories about not just that it's possible, but how um, I think is important. So yeah, thanks for joining us, Gary. I, I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Gary. Um, I've been dabbling with guitar for a long time. And uh, I, I think even going back to my school days, I wanted to play guitar. And um, when I was still at secondary school, I early days in secondary school, I asked if I could join the music club and uh, asked my parents if I could get a guitar and uh their view was, well, your sister tried it, she was rubbish, so it's no point. So from that perspective, that was an, that was an early knockback. So then you start thinking, well, obviously I'm not good enough then. So that was a bit of a thing to overcome, really, in, in, in my sort of uh, journey. Um, and probably when I moved moved out of home, um, moved to, to work in West By Fleet in Surrey, and I did a lot of nights, so... I got a second-hand guitar, uh, uh, just an acoustic, and uh, would would dabble with that on some of the long nights. And over the years, started a few online courses, had a couple of face-to-face -face lessons, but never really felt that the lessons or the tuition really set any like real direction. Um, one just focused on finger picking and it was all complicated. And it was like, what, what about the basics? You know, what about just some strumming some playing something you can recognize and 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 that sort of thing and i persisted with this uh this old acoustic washburn guitar for many years in the cupboard out the cupboard in the cupboard out the cupboard got a bit bashed over the years but still still sounded nice but i had pretty much given up after a, an attempt about just before covid when i'd gone over to see a local guitar teacher and uh he um, thought I should follow a process which was called rock guitar, mm -hmm. um, which books and some lessons and some. But you know, it just felt like it was going nowhere really quickly, and I, and I soon became very disinterested because I need to maintain my enthusiasm, and I couldn't with that. So yeah. I think I would have given up even if COVID hadn't hit, and he, he wanted me to carry on online. I just that's not going to work, is it? Because uh, you know that, that really doesn't work at all. Of course. You know, I know different now because, uh, you know, my, my experience has I I improved uh, vastly. So I think, uh, you know, being directed into your direction, and I can't remember the where, where, of why, why of it, but um, I thought it sounded interesting. It's probably something on, uh, on Facebook and because uh, it was targeted at the older players because obviously – you know, sometimes there's a bit more an issue with dexterity. Maybe just learning when you're older is is, is a new thing. And uh, having like something like the guitar to relax and unwind and stuff is, is is really a great thing. And to have something where you can commit to, you can see the structure. You can quite early doors start seeing that actually from a non-player. Because I'd never been able to play a tune all the way through before I started with the, with the process, to be able to play by following a, a, a structured approach, played my first song all the way through, and uh, yeah, you know, very cool. So that was a big cool moment for me, really, and you know, that made me have a bit of a shift in what I was thinking about myself, um, because I'd always thought there's no way I'm going to be able to play the guitar. It's way too difficult, you know, but um, actually that proves you can do it. It's sequential steps and you build and you build and you build some more and you try something, you get a bit stuck, you come on to like a mentorship call or, or reach out to the community um, and you soon get put in the right direction. So having that community as well and support, very encouraging um, nobody's ever got a bad word to say. It's always very, very positive criticism, and it's it's uh, it's what you need. So I think from non-player to player within like three months is amazing revelation. And 
you, you can actually do it if you if you go through the steps. I've never been very good at or patient to do follow steps, but I think uh, you know with this process because the next step isn't that far away. You know, you're not spending five six weeks doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So I think it goes back to um, what you what you said with your experience with. Um, some of the local lessons you did you you were focused on finger style and stuff but there was not really the the structured approach and the stages to 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 get there it was like jumping into stuff that's maybe too hard for where you are originally there's no like build, building the bridge and so that's it's kind of a recipe for frustration the point yeah. of being able to play that first song you know just starts to disappear over the over the horizon. What was the f the first song that you learned then um, after we started working together? Oh, it was uh, Let It Be. That was one of my favourite. And I did quite a few songs, Stand By Me, I think was another one I picked. And I've got a whole pile of um, mm -hmm. printed um, sheets from white and yellow now because uh, I've, I've pro progressed pretty well through, through yellow and um Finding that I'm reaching up to some orange pick stuff for some for some challenges and stretching, and uh, found that you know it's uh, it's great because you know you, you need the foundations, and that's pretty evident. So doing the Django's pretty much did that foundation, and uh, the strumming patterns um, were pretty simple because uh, obviously you move on in, in yellow to the uh, syncopated ones and, and uh, so you're doing more stuff on the offbeat and, and things like that and there's a few little bits of lead in there and uh, a few different chords and they get introduced so um, it just builds up that vocabulary of things you can do on the guitar and I think that's something that I found quite revelatory really and just having confidence to be able to try something because I'm not good at failing things. I, I, I'd rather not do it than to fail. But I think if you want something enough, you will be, you are prepared to go, go through that little bit. And it's not really, it's not really failure. It's learning. And that's, you've got to change. I had to change my mindset a bit. And, uh, and I think because of the progress, that whole thing did change my mindset from, I can't do it to I absolutely can do it. And, uh, you know, I've had a few moments where, you know, it's been quite emotional, a bit like Steve and one of the other ones where mm -hmm. I was just doing some chord progressions and just messing around on, on the guitar and I just closed my eyes and I found I could still play all the chords. And I was like, really? Like, that must be a fluke. So, you know, I've done that a few times now where I just I just don't look at my fingers. So I can I can I can do that which means that actually going through the process of the changes and one minute movements and all this sort of stuff does build that that memory and and you and you can do it and I look forward to cuz I've just obviously signed up for another year I've I look forward to you know developing further um this this uh this journey because you know it absolutely is and when you when you hear people at the start you think this is all very <laughs> sounds all a bit cliched and stuff, but actually, once you get into it, it, it really isn't. And I'm quite a skeptical person, so you know, for me to commit to something, you know, it takes a bit of a bit of a step. But uh, mm -hmm. I think in early chats with yourself and the encouragement and all the rest of it, positive attitude and, and the fact that you had this community sort of behind you, and uh, it all adds to the sort of experience really and uh it's been great i mean I, I i can't i can't really um think of any criticism to level at it really i think uh you, you've, you've made a few changes which are quite exciting in terms of uh you know having a few different clinics that focus on certain things because you know um some people might think that just playing guitars enough well i like to think that i can sing a bit as well and obviously some of the sheets are tailored towards helping you sing but to have some clinics in that area has uh given me a bit of confidence to, to to try some of those things out it's just nice to do it for yourself sometimes you know it's it's just it's just fantastic really so when we when we 
first had that conversation together about what you wanted to do and what we wanted to focus on. Did you, did you think that this, you know, this far down the line, you would be sitting there opening your mouth, singing along and that kind of thing? No, no, not, not, not at all. And I mean, uh, you know, the fact that, I mean, I, I now could pick up any of those chord sheets and be confident within a couple of weeks. I mean, from the levels I'm in, I know with a couple, within a couple of weeks, I can have a pretty good stab at producing a, a reasonable sound. Um, some of the faster ones I find still a bit tricky, but, you know, they still sound right because the, the timing's still there. It's just sometimes a bit, bit slower. But uh, I know, I, know I, I really, I didn't really believe that you could play, you know, 30 songs in a, in a year. But actually... You can play as many as you want, really. I mean, you, you, you once you've got the foundations there, you, it's not a, it's not a massive learning curve. You know, a few of them have got a few different subtleties in them. You know, that you have to sort of learn and get the timing. But because you've done the foundational stuff, um, they come a lot quicker, I think. So, yeah, absolutely, yeah, great. So you've you've come quite a way so we started we started from the very beginning didn't we with yeah, we did. the alignment yeah. with the guitar chords what i call white pick level yeah, yeah. and then you you learn a good few songs through doing that yeah um do you remember any of the songs that we did at white yeah i mean there's a few i did sweet caroline i did i did zombie i did stand by me i did let it be um, I think I might have done, I think, one of us. Um, there's quite a few, really, because um, I wanted to do quite a few before I moved moved on, just to, like, cement. And, uh, you know, I still I still go back now sometimes to do a, a white pick on the Django's because it still sounds nice. And, uh, you know, but, yeah, quite quite a few. Probably, I'll, I'll probably say at least a dozen that I, I learned and played through end to end. Oh, great. Yeah, really, really good. And then we took that foundation that you'd built and we went into yellow. We took your chords up further into those open chords, moving three or four fingers. We took your strumming up into syncopation. And what kind of songs were you doing at yellow? I mean, that's where you, I think you spent the lion's share of of our time. Yeah, and, and again, I've, 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 I've done um, quite a few. I did... Um talk about revolution tracy chapman i think i did some yellow pick versions of ones i've done done at white as well i think uh, probably um let it be wasn't in there i think i i did i started with some simple stuff like king of the road and 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 that sort of stuff that had more like straight eight or easier sort of rhythms and, and moved into um some of the some of the other ones i think and i kind of kind of do forget which ones are yellow and which ones are white and which ones mm -hmm. are sort of a bit of a look wonderful world and you know um which is great because um you know again i've probably got a bit more of a way to go with yellow just to finish off some of the different strumming patterns because i really like <laughs> i really like the mist pattern from the, for the early stage and uh um I can't even remember the every man I, I like. That's in, that's in the, in the new one, isn't it? The, the the down, down up, up down yes, up one. Yeah. I really like that one, and I've played, been playing quite a lot of songs with that one because I like it, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm not much into the sort of scarce side of it. Although I like quite like listening to it, but um, so I've been probably a little bit narrow on on uh, on some of the strumming patterns. So I want to I want to go and try a few more of them, but um, I want to try to. Um, get to say like january and then hopefully move across into orange properly and uh hopefully that's a reasonable sort of target mm. i mean uh you know i'm 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 certainly playing wonderful world you know it's all uh it's all uh all positive like i said and looking forward to uh some some new challenges and you know eventually moving into the realms of the dreaded bar chords and stuff like that do you are you do they feel dreaded yeah, because they they just hurt my hands, and uh, I've tried a few, and uh, I can play an F, but it's quite painful. But I really probably should start with easier ones. But you know, 
yeah, we the need to do that was, together then. Yeah, the theory was get F down and everything else will be easy after that. But of course, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably not the right way to look at it. But uh, yeah, I've seen loads of videos on bar calls and how to do them, and some some people have different approaches to how you, you sort of learn and move into them. And and so you know, I want to learn the right way. So um, that's on the shelf for now, bar chords. Till I get some guidance. <laughs> yeah, let's Not do it. Bad. Let's build to it. From from where you are, you're you're really sort of leaving yellow. There's a couple of rhythms you want to broaden out, but you've got the skill set for level. You've got a nice collection of songs there, and you're making good headway into orange. So I, I think I think so. Comfortable. Yeah. yeah, the changes are comfortable. Um, certainly, the G to C one because um, there's no anchors or anything. It's just having to land isn't it on on that one and you know even from chord changes there are some revelatory things even though you quite clearly articulate how to do it and what thing you should stay and how to move moving from g to d i remember having a conversation and i said i was struggling with this and like you just said but you just you just rock your fingers across and uh move your fingers across so it's a really quite a simple change and those little moments, like I was struggling for a couple of weeks, and with five minute five minutes on a on the mentorship call, it was it was it was resolved. So you know these are the things you sometimes get embroiled in and think, yeah. you know, I've just got to battle through this. But then actually, you know, you 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 just have some little techniques of of how to do it, and it just it opens it up then because all of a sudden those songs you're playing that have got G to D, I think that was Tracy Chap. That might have been a Tracy Chap. Yeah. Um, the Revolution. And and that also included an upstrung, upstrum after you change chords. So you, you go in down, down, and on the up, you have to, having to Angel. change Django C. Yeah. So just thinking on, on paper, that looks really hard. But once you've practised it and you know you can do the change, it just sort of it works. So uh yeah, quite a few of those utopian moments and they're quite emotional really, to be to be honest, because when you've not been able to do something you've always wanted to do, for whatever reason, to suddenly be well, given the tools to do it and with the right bit of application, you can do it. I mean, it's not like you have to practice sixteen hours a day, you know. I try to I, I do pick up my car, my guitar pretty much every day, and it will range between probably half an hour to an hour, or a little bit more sometimes on the weekends. So you know, it's and much to the wife's uh, um, chagrin, I've got quite an extensive collection of guitars now. So <laughs> I'm not allowed any more of my racks full. So it's only a six guitar rack. But, uh, um, nice. It just sounds so much different, and it, uh, it's just a lovely thing to think. Actually, the viewpoint in the past was no point buying a nice guitar because I don't play the flipping thing, so I won't. But actually, now I've got a couple of fairly nice ones, which uh, sound even better. So you know, it's just uh, a nice thing to have that sort of trust in yourself to be able to 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 do that. And uh, I'm lucky yeah. I can. So uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's it's a it's a great thing. So uh, you know, I think uh, yeah, go go the process, and uh, you know, you're very supportive, and the process is great. I mean, you know, it's great when you see new people join, and some of them make really fast progress, don't they? They're you know, and some of the people have been there a while. They're like posting all the time, and I've been really bad at posting because I still have confidence issues, but. Oh, that's my that's my um challenge for mm. the next three to six months is is try to post something once a fortnight. That's my that's my aim. That's so, a great cadence. Yeah, yeah. let's let's do it. Let's do it. And we can we can build your confidence in that. Well, kind of thing. Absolutely. And it and it also if you don't do that, then how you're not getting the best out of the the process are you because you're not getting the feedback loop and that's really important to get that feedback loop yeah. so i know that but i mean i can tell i'm making progress anyway because yeah. my wife stopped putting her fingers in her ears when i touched the guitar and the dog stopped <laughs> stopped running away but uh you yeah, know it's, uh, that, yeah, it's good. that feedback is um 
it's essential. Like you mentioned that change just from a G to D and you could be, you could be shown that and doing it in a particular way, but there might be something about the way you're moving or the way you're building the change that's going to hold you back. And the more you do it, you know, the more you learn that way of doing it and just jumping in, if I can see what you're doing, like on and guide you through it. Sometimes it is, it, it's pretty quick. Like I can usually see exactly what the problem is and, and shift the way you're fundamentally approaching the, the change. If we get the core to the change, there's, you know, there's different groupings of chord change depending on whether the finger's anchored, whether the finger slides, whether you're, there's a shape of the chord that moves into another one. And we can change how you're building it and, and pretty quickly get you just on, on the, on the right track again. So it can be, it's a useful steering mechanism. And it's something that just doesn't exist. If, if you know, you're, it's just videos or books, or you're, you're, you know, you're going to lessons where you're just being shown stuff. And then you go away to like, you're supposed to just figure it out, put it, put it together on, on your own kind of thing. It's the, the, the feedback is a, is a crucial component. You, you mentioned your wife, um, Obviously, she uh, is a big fan of your collection of guitars. But what what what's she saying about your playing? Well, she she's saying that it's much more rhythmical, uh, and it's smoother. And a couple of times, she's even said she's recognised a song. So you know, I think that's good. I mean, she's got a really good ear. She plays the piano. I think she did mm-hmm. grade eight piano. So she's she's definitely a musician, and she's also. A, a pretty good good singer but uh you know so i've got that i've got that inferiority complex a bit you know and i, and I have that a lot it's like just just me really but uh i think uh the fact that i've had some positive affirmment from from her has really helped my confidence and uh and the next step is putting myself out there a bit more to community you know sometimes you just got to do these things when you're ready and i think i'm 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 there. I'm ready. I'm, I feel a bit more confident about things, and uh, confidence brought back by improving, and also some of the efforts other people do. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know. It's a question of you learn more from putting out something that's not quite right than you do from putting out something that's perfect. So, and it's the same in my job. I mean, I'm, I work in IT, mm-hmm. and I have to share designs. There's no different a design to a piece of music. You you put it out there. This is what I think. You get the relevant expertise and people critique it. And and it's similar in, in this really because you'll get that sort of feedback loop of, you know, if you do this or if you that that change is supposed to be like this or you know the the timing is this, then you can you can you can factor that in and improve. Otherwise. If you do perfect, well, there's nowhere to go, is there? And that's the thing. You're not going to learn unless you, you put yourself out there. So I know that. So uh, I'm going to do it. It's true. Yeah, let's do it. And it's there's a confidence aspect to it as well, isn't there? But your yeah, point is, is coming along really well. You're, you you know, you're. it's very English. You're self-deprecating. But yeah, no, absolutely. We look back a year, yeah. like it's it's really strong progress like no i don't recognize myself i I really don't recognize myself in terms of me guitar playing it's just like i never would have thought in a year with the amount of practice because i'm not like i said on it all the time but i do i do every day but uh i wouldn't have thought i could have progressed because when you first start looking at material there's quite a lot in it it's quite involved you know and going through those stages and all the rest of it and the speeds and all the rest of it. It's quite involved. There's quite a lot in it. And uh, but it you can see it all it all builds and even with like the chord sequences, they start quite simple and they build and they get a bit more get a bit more complicated and you know, and being able to do those and it just think, well, I can do those, I can do a song, can't I? So, you know, and, and then actually doing a song, it's like, oh I can do a song. Well maybe I'll try another one. Well it wouldn't have fluke. I can do it. You know, and then so if I can do if I can do it at white, well, I can do it at yellow. It's just a question of understanding the mechanics of it. It all builds into having more confidence. So, you know, it's it's uh, like I said, I, I don't recognise myself. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, superb. Well, you're you're doing it. It's really really yeah. great. 
that's what we want. I think it really has been a bit of a transformation, which is superb. You mentioned a few times um, different aspects of the community and the fact that you're, you know, you're, you're learning, you're aware of other people's progress and alongside them when they're jumping on calls and things like that. What, what's, um, what, what do you feel has really come out of the community for you? Are there any like significant moments or the way we do things or anything? Well, I just think it's the passion of people and, and the, the warmness of people and people are always commenting, generally speaking, um, it's just a very supportive community, I think. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a warm feeling. It feels like going cliches. It does feel like quite a big little family, doesn't it? I think. And, uh, it's quite, a it's quite a powerful thing to have that sort of backing. And, uh, you know, and I've, you know, thought about, um, perhaps, uh, next year, it might be a good opportunity for me to do something like the, the Wii guitar and, uh, get a bit closer in with, 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 with things, you know, cause mm -hmm. that certainly, um, that certainly interests me for, for, for perhaps, uh, 12 months time as well. Cause I think, uh, unless you invest in yourself, then, you know, Nobody else is going to do it, and uh, because of how people are, it just makes me want to do that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, again, that's that's uh, another one for an offline conversation. But, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, just because of how nice everybody is, and uh, and like you can see people improving, and it's just great. And some people are doing doing all sorts of things like open mics and all this sort of stuff, and it's just like wow. They're a great group of people, aren't they? Really, there's some, there's some, there's some characters amongst them, you know. And obviously, there's uh, there's a few stateside as well and stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. there's some interesting characters, but everybody's really helpful. Everybody's trying to improve. Everybody seems to have a bit of a similar sort of mindset. Obviously, it's um, a group for you know us older ones, <laughs> but you know it works. Yeah, superb. Yeah, absolutely. I think more and more I see the relevance of who I who I bring in and sort of decide to work with, decide not to work with, and how an awareness of how um, how I can help them and where they want to go, but also, of course, the the way the transformation that's going to happen because most people when they we first have a conversation. They're full of doubts. They've tried it for many years and not, not made progress. There's a like, you know, what, what's going on here? Am I, am I going to be able to do this? And cut, really coming in contact with people who are um, very humble, but making good progress, being super encouraging, super supportive. And then, you know, me being really hands on with the guidance and the feedback and exactly what you need. It's, it's a, it can be a nice combination of, of, of elements, I think, but underlying that is the the people who who the people are, and I'm I'm really um, I'm really proud of the stuff that happens in the community and the interactions and the, the guidance that people give and the, the mentorship. Even you know, especially sometimes when somebody comes on and they're brand new and they they have doubts or something isn't going according to plan, which is you know that that's why we're here that's that's what i do you know if it all worked perfectly you wouldn't you, nobody would need to talk to me um and and the the wisdom from people who are further along mm. can, can talk about their real experiences and and what it's been like and it's 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 so important i think to have that um people i've heard people it being like doubly rewarding the person who's at the beginning hearing the person who's further along is mm. super super valuable that perspective but then the person who's further along sharing their journey and these significant yeah. things and what it was like for them at that point in time yeah. they realize the distance as well that they have come like it's it, yeah. it's so um, it's really nice it works, it works really well in that sense they're all really relatable because you know most of them will say well i started here and you know people say i've been doing this part of the process for this long and that long and all the rest of anything well actually 
Yeah, I can relate to that. And yeah, that's similar to my experience. I might have done that a bit, a bit quicker. This bit's been a bit slower. We've all got strengths and weaknesses like we have in most things in, in life. Mm-hmm. But but like you say, it's uh, it, it works. It's cyclical, isn't it? Like you said, it's cyclical in, in terms of that feedback loop and knowing where people are and seeing them progress. And that's encouraging because you see people progress especially people who joined at some sort of time to myself and all the rest of it, you can see them progress and think, well, they're, they're progressing, I can progress. And, uh, you know, new ones, like you say, if I can support and I, I try to watch some posts and uh, I'm, I'm always like keen to give somebody a pat on the back. And that gives you a buzz as well because you've helped somebody else. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that stuff. Like, that's that's great. Do you know roughly how many songs you would have learned over the last year Ooh, i reckon probably at least 20 20 ish mm. and some i've started and not really liked but mm. not stopped from a technical perspective just because i don't didn't like them but uh yeah i've definitely learned 20 and played 320 yeah great superb yeah it's a good point let's not spend any time on songs you're not interested in playing you could get halfway through a song with enthusiasm and it sort of you know you don't want to it's like a book isn't it you get halfway through it and it kind of dies in your hands like let's yeah. stay with the stuff that you're passionate about there's so many songs out there no, no absolutely and uh the archives are great because you can um get the chord sheet you can watch the you can watch the lesson you can link off to some performances of the songs as as well in in most cases i think and so you can see how it's done and then how it relates to lesson and then you've got like the target and you can see you know where where you're trying to get to and uh sounds like the song you're trying to play and uh that's quite a revelation when you first you know when you're playing like let it be to start with get the capo and all the rest of it you think, oh, it didn't sound that close and then you put the capo on and suddenly it sounds so much like closer and it's that's a bit of a revelatory moment as well because actually you know and then like i said just started playing that at orange and again it just takes it up a level of closeness to to, to the original you know and uh but I, I do think that the Django chords are amazing because they allow you to get into it at the beginning without having to move your fingers so much you end up getting frustrated because you've got uh, an approach. It's still not it's not easy, but it's you can see it's doable because like you're only moving one or two fingers, whereas when you get to orange, you're moving four maybe sometimes and stuff. Yeah. So it it um. Yeah, it's building on those levels. And once you've been through the levels, you sort of, uh, I understand now because, you know, you've done that eight simpler ones and you've done to yellow and you've, you've transitioned. So you understand how it all sort of fits together. But I think that's one of the biggest things for me is that you can, you can end up playing even from not complete novice, but from pretty much a novice to be able to play a song within, you know, a few weeks and for it to sound pretty reasonable, to be honest, just using the Django's. And that that was the thing that actually, well, I can definitely do this. So why didn't I why didn't I do this before? Yeah, you know, that sort of thing. But... <laughs> mm, you you have to reach that moment. Like you have to reach the moment where That's the first priority. Like there's foundations that we need to build. We need to condition the hands to not be blocking strings and things like that. But the way I see it is leading you to the point where you're playing that first song and it's recognizable. And then you prove to yourself you can do it. You know you can do it. So even though we're talking about we're at yellow, early orange pick level and and we're talking about how bar chords seem like a thing that are really, is really hard, but we're conditioning the hands. You're going to be playing bar chords in, you know, when we're through green and, and, and at blue, like you, you're going to be doing it. It's not a thing that like some people have the wrong hands or the wrong size or 
mm-hmm. mobility, we, we condition the hands as we go, we prepare them and we use a structured approach. You'll, you, you're going to be playing bar chords. Yeah. And, and that's something I think I can do now because I've gone through this whole sort of process. You end up believing you can do it. And that's quite a shift. And because you believe you can do it, that motivates you to carry on. And for me, I need to be motivated. Otherwise, I stop, which is why I've stopped 50 times in, in the past because, yeah. you know, I was just not making any progress. So I, I would look at the guitar and see, you know, a burning firebrand rather than a musical instrument. The guitar is where my art is. That's that's what I want to learn. So yeah. that's what I want to do. And this really was a last chance saloon for me, I think. So, you yeah, here, here I am. So uh, it's uh, great. And like I said, I've just signed up for another year. And that's giving me a real buzz because, you know, you just want to carry on and maintain some progress. So uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Well, here's to another year of progress like you've made so far. Absolutely. Up consistently, more songs. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to build that confidence. We're going to get you more comfortable in Orange Pick. Let's also venture into some of the coordination with singing more. Get yeah, you absolutely. really, really doing it. And it's going to be good. Yeah, absolutely. Can't That's wait. Stuff. Thank you. Cool. Thanks a lot, Gary. It's been been really good. It's a pleasure. Thanks very much.